We're, we're ready, Dave. Can I can I cross my arms like this, or does that look bad? Oh, okay. Hey, good afternoon. Thanks for coming out. We had um, this was our third practice, um, the first day of um, of shoulder pads, and I've been really pleased so far with what our guys, um, what type of effort our guys have put forth. We had a very we had a very productive summer in terms of strength and conditioning. Our Drew Wilson and his staff uh, did a great job. You know, our number one, our number one thing is to be best conditioned, and um, that's part of our foundation. And so I told Drew that I wanted to really push these guys this summer to make sure that we were in great shape to start fall camp, so that we could put our best foot forward, so guys would keep. They could compete, so we could sustain and practice, so we could finish plays. And I'm seeing that right now. It was a uh, first day of pads is usually a little sloppy um, on both sides of the ball, but um, compared to what I've seen in, in past years, it was it was fairly clean. And so um, on both sides of the ball, on special teams, I think we're efficient. The coaches are uh, organized. The players are enthusiastic. There's an excitement about what we're doing, and not only that, but the players are actually willing to put in the work. And so, um, it was a it was a good step for us today. I'm looking forward to watching the film and um, and getting back out there um, for practice number four. So I'll open up the questions. Mel, uh, you you since the day you got here, you've talked about this being a physical program right. and, and and setting the tone in that regard. With the way that football has changed, I mean, it's not the 90s when you played. You have to coach differently. The practices are different. How do you become a physical football team when the physicality is limited in your preparation? Well, it starts in the weight room. In order to be physical, you, you, know, you, have, to, you have to be best conditioned. You have to be strong. You have to be big. Um, and uh, it's, a, it's a mentality. However, when we put the pads on, um, you know, and, and we have a certain amount of pattern practices, there are opportunities to be physical. And um, we, do, uh, we do a lot of contact drills. And uh, the difference is, unless we're in a live scrimmage, you know, we don't take guys to the ground. And so that's really the key to having a safe practice um, is, you know, guys staying on their feet, you know, um, using their eyes, um, uh, using their hands, playing with a good base, and taking care of each other. I show the players uh, before our, our pad of practices, I show them NFL tape, NFL practice tape, and show them how the NFL guys are able to, to be physical, run and hit and run their plays to get the work done, but stay off the ground. You don't see, uh, you don't see players uh, you know, taking Julio Jones to the ground during practice. You don't see guys taking shots at Tom Brady <laughs> in practice, you know. So just learning how to practice um, in a physical way, but staying off the ground um, keeps our guys safe. And then when we have scrimmages, then we'll go, we'll go full, full go to the ground, but we don't have very many of those practices. Most of our practices are staying up off the ground, and, and, um, and I feel like we're able to get physical practices that way. Three days is obviously a, a small sample size just to kind of gauge where your guys are at. But from day one here now at day three, has, have you noticed just a, an upward trajectory just from your guys in terms of the intensity, the effort you're seeing, comfortability with the playbook and whatnot? I see that our guys are able to play harder uh, for longer. We're able to be more consistent in practice in terms of, in terms of the effort that we give on each and every play. We, I don't have, we don't see the lulls in practice, like where we're up one minute and we're down the next. We're able to sustain and get better, and sometimes we're actually a little bit better towards the end of the practice than the beginning. And that's due to our conditioning. Um, we have more players um, on the field now than we had in the spring. We have more depth on our, on our defensive line which, in our secondary, which is helping. So um, I just feel like we're a better conditioned football team. The players know more of what to expect from the coaching staff, and everyone's bought in. So we're able to be more efficient. We're able to be more productive. Mel, I, I think it was earlier this week or last week you had a visitor, I think, from USA Rugby talking about tackling. And yep. There's been a lot of um, crossover there. How much have you guys adopted that kind of rugby style of tackling? Yeah, that's a big part of it. Um, in, in, uh, in blow delivery and tackling, you want to keep the head out of the game. 
Uh, that's a, a huge point of emphasis for us uh, as coaches, and that's how we, we teach blow, delivery, and tackling. Uh, it's very similar to rugby. Um, we usually we, we lead with the near leg and the near shoulder and keep the head, and keep the head out of it. And um, I just wanted to get with, um, with the uh, rugby people just to make sure we were um, – see if we could pick up anything. And obviously we tried to share ideas. Um, but we were uh, in, in alignment in terms of, you know, what's the safest way to, um, to tackle and, 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 uh, and deliver a blow. And so it was a good meeting, and we're going to continue to collaborate and consult a as we go. All right. All right, Coach. Last season, Colorado won their first five games, but then lost their last seven. Um, what kind of mental toughness have you provided for this team to avoid a debacle like that from last year? Well, you know, I told the players um, a couple of days ago in a team meeting that I wouldn't mention the the five and zero and lose seven straight. Um, but obviously, they'll probably hear it again. Um, you know, everything that we do is to build mental toughness, and it really it starts in the weight room. You know, we compete in the weight room, we push in the weight room, we strain, we don't make excuses. It's all about it's all about production. Um, making yourself better every day and making the guy next to you better. Our coaches uh, are confront and demand operation. And so um, we built um, trust with our players. They know that we care about them. We know that they know that um, we have their best interests at heart. Um, however, when um, they don't perform up to the standard, when something's not done properly, we confront them right away and we demand that they do it right. And that's uh, a culture of accountability, whether it's on or off the field. And when you're uh, when you have discipline um, and you're accountable and you do things right and you know how to strain, you can get comfortable uh, being uncomfortable. Okay, then you can handle adversity in games and in seasons, and you can prevent slides like that that you talked about. Coach. Um, you talked about how you have more depth in the secondary, and that's an area that this team kind of struggled with last year. Can you? Who are the key players in that group? And also, with you being a defensive guy, yeah. is there going to be more of an emphasis on that group and what they can bring to the team? Yeah, we plan on playing playing good defense. Um, you know, Mikael Uno, who we got in from um, SMU, was really going to help us. Aaron Maddox was not didn't really take reps. Uh, in the spring, and I really like what I've seen out of him so far. Chris Miller didn't take reps in the spring, and I like uh, what I see from him. Um, the uh, Mark Perry, a true freshman, has come in, and he uh, looks like he belongs out there, and he's just he just got to learn what to do. And so um, there were some guys that didn't practice in the spring, and also some guys that were not um, were not even on our team that are here now that I uh, expect to contribute for us. Coach, how how much fun is it for you coming in in your first year to have a guy like LaVisca, and what is he going to bring to this team beyond watch list after watch list? Yeah, fun. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. I, I was excited to actually see him, see him practice, you know, and he is different. I mean, when he, when he, uh, when he gets the ball and he's, he turns it on, he's at a different speed than everyone else, and so – um, it's not often that you get a chance to to coach a, a player like that, um, and but you know the thing about him I, I really like is that you know obviously we know he's a he's a great player and and uh, you know height weight speed he's I mean, he's a basically a freak of nature, um, but he's a really good young man I mean like he's a he's very personable he's kind of shy until you get to know him then once you get to know him you realize he's got a sense of humor you know he he likes to kid around a little bit. Um, and uh, he's just a he's just a special young man, and and now that his brother his brother's on the team, you know I got two of those jokers running around out there. So um, yeah, I, it's exciting to have to have uh, to have players like Lavisca out there on out there on this on the team. Coach, uh, we saw you out here today working a lot with uh, the defensive backs, which I know you said you were were going to do yeah. leading up to this. But if these first I, few days of practice uh, uh, or even going back to the spring, has it been an adjustment for you? being kind of a hands-on defensive coach to being the guy that has to oversee everything? Yeah, it's, um, it's a little bit of adjustment. I work with the DBs a little bit. I, I can't help it. You know, I somehow end up drifting over to them and, 
and trying to help those guys out. You know, in in the NFL, you you can have as many coaches as you want. There's no limit on coaches. In college football, there's a limit on how many guys you can have full time working with your players. And so, it's really you need to be all, all hands on deck. You know, if I have an expertise as a head coach, it's up to me, and I owe it to the players to to give those guys what I what I've got. I, I really enjoy coaching um, the technique and fundamentals of, of the game, and it's uh, it's it's not difficult for me to, you know, run the entire operation, but you know, take eight or ten minutes to work with corners or safeties. Um, that's not difficult. Looks like this is going to be a short one. Yes, coach. It seemed as though when you landed here in Colorado, you immediately started to go to work in recruiting talent in our own in, your, in our own backyard. How important is it to make sure that we secure some of that in-state talent that has eluded us in the in the past, and make sure that they stay home and see you to make this program better? It's important for us to start start at home our recruiting. You know, we start here in our state, and then we work out from there. Um, it's very interesting um, recruiting in the state here because there are some really good football players um, here in our state, and maybe. Um, Maybe the state's maybe a little underrated um, in terms of the, the brand of football. There's a lot of good coaches, a lot of good programs. Um, and so the, 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 um, the challenge for us is to um, be attractive to those players, those, those top level players. You know, you can't assume that just because a kid is in your state that he's going to want to come to your school. You know, and a lot of these these, these kids, um, these young men growing up, you know, CU hasn't been hasn't had a, a very relevant program, and so you know we're fighting for our in-state guys, um, you know, just like we would be fighting for an out-of-state guy. You know, we really can't assume anything now. Um, once they're, the players and the parents, they, you know, they visit us, they get to know our coaching staff, they watch our practices, they see what we're all about. You know, their eyes are open and they see a difference. But I really believe that we're going to have to win in order to really do what we need to do recruiting in our state. I think that's going to be important um, because that's what, you know, players want to be part of a winning program. And um, now on the other hand, we have some players that um, see what we're see what we're um, doing and they really like the direction of our program and they want to be a part of building it. You know, they want to be a part of say, had to be a part of the turnaround. And that's a challenge to some guys and they take that challenge on. So, um, you know, you really got two different types of student athletes that we're recruiting. Um, but at the end of the day, we have to have success. And um, when you have success, you, you have a, a better chance of recruiting more good players. Coach, you mentioned that in the NFL there's a limited, you know, unlimited amount of coaches you can have. In the college, you have restriction. Uh, recently at the Pac-12 Media Day, you uh, announced Darren Cheverini as an assistant head coach, mm -hmm. and you've kept three guys from the old uh, McIntyre staff. Talk about why you made that decision to uh, promote Coach Cheverini. Well, you know, I, I've talk, I talked to Chev when I, when I initially got here. You know, he wanted to be here. He's a buff. And – um, you know, his, his son's on the team. He's a walk-on. He's a receiver. Um, and I think Shev's an outstanding talent. He's an outstanding coach. He's an excellent recruiter. He's a relentless recruiter. And um, he's really helped me with the transition. Um, you know, it's my first job out west. You know, he has really good recruiting ties in California and Texas. And he knows, uh, he knows CU. And, he, you know, he's got a really good um, feel for the – for um, you know what things are all about here, so uh, he does a really good job communicating communicating with me, and because of his outstanding recruiting, you know I wanted to uh, give him that title. He earned that. Mel, a question about uh, about quarterback. Uh, I'd imagine when you come in and take over a program, having a fifth year guy probably is is nice. Having a a player like that at that position, it's got experience. Not knowing him outside of the last eight months, talk about what you've seen with. Uh, Steven, in terms of his approach, being his final year, a lot of times you see those guys kind of get a bit more focused. What, what have you seen from him leading up to this season? Yes, um, Steven is, um, he is a very smart player. 
I mean, I'm, I've, been, I've been really impressed with just his, his intellect and how quickly he picks up, uh, you know, the schemes, um, the things that Coach Johnson's asking him to do, whether they're run checks, pass checks. Uh, you know, he really runs a good show. He's got command of the huddle. Um, when, you, when I watch him throw the ball, you know, the first time I saw him throw the ball, I said, man, this guy's got as good an arm as anyone that I've seen. And I've seen some really good quarterbacks coast against some really good quarterbacks. And in terms of our arm talent, he has, he has no deficiencies. He's got really good size, okay, and he actually has really good mobility. Um, and he is a fierce competitor. And I told Steven, I said, you know, your, your starting quarterback has to be your number one competitor. And I see him can, competing at a high level every day. Um, we need to help him. You know, we need to um, bolster our offensive line. Coach Kappas does a great job with our offensive line. He's one of the best O-line coaches in America. We have to be able to run the ball. Okay, and that's going to open up the play action and give us some balance on offense. Okay, and we also um, – need to uh, get the ball to all of our best players. You know, we're going to spread it out. You know, we've got some, some skilled guys at receiver that can, uh, other than LaVisca and KD, they can do some things for us. And obviously we're going to use the tight end in our offense. But, you know, Stephen has, has all of the tools. You know, it always comes down to taking care of the ball and judgment and decision making. Um, but I'm very high. I'm very high on him, and I, um, the, the, the sky's the limit for him. I believe, I, I'm, I, uh, I believe in him. Coach, you start your tenure here. I'm over here, Coach, by the way. Uh, here you go, Coach. Here you go. You start okay. your tenure at CU uh, going up against Colorado State. Then you have yeah. Air Force in your third game. And then you have Nebraska. So three rivalry games in a row. What's the challenge of starting your coaching career mm -hmm. here at CU with three rivalry games? Yeah, well, I'm, you know, rivalry games are – that's what it's all about. I mean, that's what makes college football great um, and uh, pro football as well. I've been very fortunate that – but to be able to coach in some rivalry games, you know, uh, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, and Chicago, Green Bay, and Ohio State, Michigan, and Auburn, Alabama, Georgia, Florida, those are huge games that you got to win, you know. And so um, I'm used to that. And, you know, at the end of the day, there are certain things you have to do to prepare a team to be in a position to win a game. And whether it's a rivalry game or not, uh, those things are, are the same. And so um, I hate to sound cliche, you know, we're going to take it one game at a time. But um, I will say this, um, you know, we're, we're, there's, there's no way to um, downplay the expect, expectations of football games, especially rivalry games. You really can't say, well, it's just another game because it's not just another game. You know, I, there's – there's not a day that goes by that somebody doesn't walk, walk up to me and say, we got to beat Nebraska. I mean, every day since I've been here, December 5th. You know, well, it is what it is, right? And so, um, you know, we're going to play. And it's the same thing with Colorado State, the same thing with Air Force. You can't downplay the expectations. They're huge games, all of them. And uh, we've got to get it done. Coach, uh, look back over your career as a player and as a coach, um, who – who influenced you or impacted you the most that uh, style-wise, philosophy, uh, that has impacted you and affected your uh, style as a coach? I would say from a defensive standpoint, uh, Nick Saban, was, was, he gave me my first job. He's my mentor. Uh, three of my first four years in the profession, I was with Coach Saban, you know, two at Michigan State and one at LSU. Um, and I learned a lot from him, uh, defensive philosophy, uh, recruiting and you know he takes a CEO mentality and approach to running his program. Um, Jim Trestle, um, I spent four, I spent four years with Coach Tress at Ohio State. I was in his first four years uh, there. We won a national championship in our second year, um, and and uh, he is a is a great ambassador um, for the game. You know he taught us that you know at Ohio State. We were there to serve the people of the state of Ohio. You know, we were servant leaders. And so I've always taken that approach, you know, here in Colorado. You know, we're here for the people of Colorado, the high school coaches, the players, the fans, the alums that we're, we're here to serve. Um, and I learned from uh, Coach, Coach Saban and uh, Coach Trussell, both championship coaches, that you is more than one way to skin a cat. You know, they're very different. Um, 
styles, very different approaches to to coaching and and um, you know dealing with players and dealing with coaches. And so what that told me is just be you know I have to be myself. You know, don't try to be Nick. You know, don't try to be Trust. Don't don't try to be Barry Alvarez or um, Jack Del Rio or Romeo Cornell. You know, I take something from all of those coaches, but at, at the end of the day, I have to be comfortable in my own skin and what I can accomplish and just be myself. Coach, over on your, your right hand side. Right here. Um, yeah. Nate Landman is a guy who had a you know, standout season last year and has gotten a lot of accolades kind of heading into this season. What are your expectations for him? Just um, to get better and better every day. Because, you know, Nate um, is a very instinctive football player. Um, he's very talented, and he loves, he loves football. He does a, a really good job um, calling our defenses. He knows all of our checks. He's a great communicator, and he leads by example, and he's not afraid to hold other guys accountable. Um, and that's a lot to put on a, on a, on a player. Um, you know, but you know, at that position, you got to have a bell cow. You got to have somebody to run the show. You got to have a you got to have a leader, and he he is all he is all of that. In order for him to get better, he's going to have to um, remain humble and hardworking, which he is. Um, can you know push push himself to get better each and every day in every aspect of his game, whether it's run defense or pass defense, whether it's communication leadership. And, you know, that's all I want him to do, and that's all I want all of our players to do and our coaches. Just be the best that you can be. Never be satisfied. Don't get complacent. You know, continue to raise the bar every day. Get 2% better. Um, if we can all do that, then we can have a good football team. Coach? So com coming in here, uh, you say you want to be um, a physical football team. But what style of football team do you want, you know, the – run first, drop back pass, and how much of that is a function of who you have right now? Mm -hmm. And well that, but also where do you want it to go? What, what is your vision of that? Now you always have to do what your players can do. And uh, that's, that's important. And that's, you know, during spring practice and these early fall practices, you know, we get a chance to, to see, um, you know, what our offensive line is capable of doing. Um, you know, what, what type of runners we have, what type of skilled guys, who can make plays for us at wide receiver, what, how much can our quarterbacks handle, um, and, you know, what, you know, how we can use our tight ends. And, and I, hired veteran, I, hired, I hired veteran coordinators on both sides of the ball so that we could um, not try to fit a square peg into a round hole from a scheme standpoint. So, you know, at some point here in the next – you know, in the next week or so, um, we'll be able to say, you know, these are our best players. This is what they can do well. This is what we can do to, to allow them to play fast and be aggressive. And then we'll, um, we'll adapt the scheme around them. And it may, you know, it may be, uh, it may be a little different um, than what we initially thought, you know, coming in. But that's why you have to have veteran coordinators to, to be able to, to adapt. But when you look on the field, what I want – people to see is I want people to see a smart football team that's best conditioned, that's well coached, okay, that plays, um, that plays um, like every play, um, like, it's their, like it's their last play in a relentless manner, um, ex extremely physical. Um, and it's not just, you know, it's not just winning games, you know, it's how you win, you know, so playing with class, you know, not beating, not having penalties, not beating ourselves. You know, I want people to look on the field and say, you know, that's a damn good football team. That's a darn good football team. They're well coached, and I, I love watching these guys play. They fly around, they play together, they celebrate together. They're good teammates. The coaches are positive. The coaches are getting after it. I think that's what people want to see, and um, that's the that's the brand of football that that I believe in. Rick George was up here earlier talking about getting to know you, the, the process of hiring you, and how you checked a lot of boxes in his eyes of a guy who he thought would be a good head coach. But on your side of things, what boxes did, did Rick check for you, just an, uh, an AD, a guy you'd want to work with, work for, in coming to Colorado and building something? Yeah, Rick's the man. I mean, Rick checks all the boxes. I mean, you all know Rick. I mean, he's one of those – he's a guy um, that – 
first and foremost, I really like being around Rick. It's 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 uh. I'm not sure if that's always the case of people that you work with or you work for that you really enjoy being in their company. Rick um, is a football guy, and um, he was a recruiting coordinator here when we won a national championship. It's a lot to be said for that. He knows exactly what it takes. He knows what my challenges are as a head coach, uh, what we need to do from a facility standpoint, uh, support staff. You know, he, he, he really gets that. And, um, you know, when he laid out his vision for what he thought CU football should be, it was in complete alignment with, with my vision. And, you know, I told Rick I didn't see any reason why I didn't think that we could compete for championships. You know, it's, uh, you have to have tradition and facilities. Um, it's been done here before. We have facilities that are second and none. Um, and it's just – the belief that you can do it and actually not only just believing it but knowing how to do it you know putting the everything in place putting the, the creating the structure um in the in the program and the process in place that will allow you to to compete and win championships and so we were in complete alignment <clears throat> uh in terms of what we thought we could do um what our um what our potential was and so um you know rick checked checked all the boxes for me Hey, Coach. Haven't seen you down at the Rockies lately, but hello. <laughs> um, offensive line, it seems like your tackles might be set. There's a lot of shifting going on on the interior of the offensive line. Can you talk about the personnel, what you're looking for, what will decide those positions, please? We have a, we, we have a, lot, of, a lot of competition on the line. And you know, when we brought Arlington Hambright in as a grad transfer, you know, we anticipated that he would be able to help us at tackle. We knew Will Sherman could play both sides. Um, obviously, uh, Frank Phillip um, is competing also at the tackle spot. You know, Tim Lanott and Kobe Purcell uh, playing both uh, center and guard inside. And uh, we need to we need to develop depth um, with some of our with at, at every position, but. There's another way you can build up other than just numbers of guys. If you can have guys that, play, that can play multiple positions. And so, you know, we're working towards that, you know, where you can have a, you know, a guy that can play center and guard or a guy that can play guard and tackle or a guy that can play both on the left and then on, on the right side. And so uh, we're, you know, playing around, you know, just working with some different combinations. Um, and then as we um, get through our second scrimmage, we should we should have a pretty good idea of what we have with our with our starters and then um, with the guys um, behind them. Coach, you have an amazing demeanor, and I think it's quite easy for folks to to be bought into as as fans to be bought into who you are yeah. uh, conceptually. Yeah. Um, your vision it seems like it's very clear. What does success look like for you at the end of the day? I mean, how many games are we going to win? <laughs> I asked you that question earlier. <laughs> you, we, were, we were undefeated. Is your was your response yeah, at that time? Yeah, yeah. The goal is the goal is to win every game on our schedule. That's the goal. And I don't believe in self-imposed limitations. You know, so um, you know, that's why we play the games. Now, how many games we're going to win? I don't know, um, but we're going to prepare um, to win. You know, and, and the one thing that is. Um, that's important um, to understand is that we don't talk about winning that much um, as a coaching staff. You know, obviously, everyone knows the goal is to win, but we talk about the process and um, the things that it takes to win, what goes into winning, you know, so strength and conditioning, attention to detail, discipline on and off the field, competition, leadership, you know, uh, practice habits. You know, our goal is to, to have our practices be harder than our games. You know, so those are all things that, that you have to do. It's a process, um, and, and it builds upon, you know, one step, you know, next step, the next step. And it takes what it takes. Um, there's, there's no shortcuts to it. It's extremely hard uh, to win a championship. And... Um, you know, what does success look like? Um, if I can look out on the field and 
I can and I can say these guys are playing football the way that the game was meant to be played, and they're and they're giving everything that they have, and they're playing smart, they're playing fast, they're playing physical, they're relentless, they don't back down, and they're willing to finish. Um, you know, I think we, I think I'm f fairly confident that we'll have success because those are the things that you have to do to be successful. Okay, at this time we're going to bring up our three most requested players because almost everybody in the room wants them. Uh, 